Hello, hello, fans of Privateer FX. Uh, here we go, uh, 5.30 p.m. Swiss time, the Sunday before the Monday, which is the first full trading day uh, into 2021. Just want to talk about a couple of things. A lot of you have uh, hit us up on the DMs, um, which we haven't really responded to too much just because we've been spending time with family, skiing, clearing our head. Um, today we went around Lake Le Mans on the bicycles, which was kind of idiotic, but it's 180 Ks, big group of us. Another form of just clearing the mechanism, um, getting ready for 2021. Many of you have asked us about 2020. 2020 um, was the third worst trading year of my career. So I've been trading sort of pure alpha since 96. So I started the business in 91, uh, you know, and I, you can't really count your years as a junior uh, as anything but just learning, blah, blah, blah. But pure alpha since 96, so I don't know, 20, 25 years. This year was the third worst. Um, so that sucks. But a couple things to speak about that is obviously we didn't lose money. Um, and the number one sort of tidbit... I would give to everyone out there is in trading and in finance, you never want to lose your seat. So as long as you don't lose your seat, as long as you don't make a massive error, some massive fuck up, some whack job, uh, P&L swing, um, if your value at risk goes, blows up or you, you average into like a huge trade and puke them, um, those are fireable offenses. And you have a couple of chances in this business, but but not really, certainly not as much as you had before. Um, so you got to protect your seat. Uh, so one of the things we actually did well in a year that was very challenging, very challenging on a personal uh, on the personal side, very challenging on volatility side. Remember January and February were fucking crap. March was the big hum humdinger, but if you weren't front foot for March, that ended pretty quickly. Then you had to be trading things that maybe a lot of people aren't used to trading. So Dollar Turkey had some big moves. Um, dollars are both up and down. The down moves in Dollars R uh, were also magnificent as far as vol. Dollar Max also moved a shitload. Um, but the majors didn't, right? Euro moved 9% which is fine. There's money to be made on a 9% year. Um, but it's not like scandalously awesome. Cable did move, um, but it was like a little hectic, right? Like the the trade that won in cable was buy massive weakness and square longs at massive strength and then sit downstairs and wait to buy, you know, hysterical weakness again. And that's a really, really tough way to trade. Uh, how do you manage your risk? Where are you going to put your bid? Where's your stop? Uh, super tricky. Um, as far as news uh, this year, there was news out there. It wasn't there wasn't any sort of G3 news. There wasn't any interesting G3 news, but there was definitely news-driven stuff in Turkey. Uh, there was Aussie news um, with some of the China stuff. You saw news in emerging markets mainly so there was if you're a news driven trader there was also opportunities to trade uh, news of course oil had an epic year down to minus 40 bucks you all remember that um, we didn't get paid uh, that day in fact our firm basically said everyone stopped trading when it went down to nine bucks on its way towards zero uh, the head of our firm and the head of our risk was kind of like, all right, nobody understands this. Uh, stop trading oil. Uh, and we did, and we just watched it. Uh, trade down to minus 40 and then back to flat. Um, and then, of course, you were changing contracts, and it was a bit of a clusterfuck. But there was huge fall in, in oil, right? I mean, then oil obviously traded all the way back to 50 bucks. Uh, so there was volatility there. And then, of course, Bitcoin... Um, some of the best fall of the year, you see it now trading at 33,000. Um, you know, 
earlier in the year, it was trading at 8. I think it went all the way down to 5. Where did it go down to? 14. That's not it. That's not it. Here it is. In March. It's ridiculous. Traded down to 3808. So many people got stopped between 9,000 and 3,808. We had a speculative position on here. Um, for the firm, we also had to take our stops uh, sort of on the institutional side. So it's like, damn. Um, so, so tough. Bitcoin. And if you trade it unleveraged with no stops, it's fine, right? Um, you're not, you know, you just have to ride it up and, and you probably lighten up at 19,000, which we did on the personal side. And here we are at 33. We actually lightened up again and we've gone square Bitcoin. Um, we think this is now like in really hysterical place, but the point is this. Uh, Bitcoin had great vol. Um, that was interesting. Also, bonds. One of the things we did get paid this year on is, is short ZB. Um, that was basically tricky trade, but you can see it in the chart here. It just trended down. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. And short ZB paid. There were plenty plenty of moves higher so it was really a tradable short on many many levels um, but it did pay right you can see the chart here from July it was at 182 traded all the way down to 170 you know 12 handles is pretty good fall uh, we do think this is going to be an interesting trade again uh, for 2021 so anyway don't want to look back too much um, Let's start looking forward, right? So the, the odometer is back at zero, um, like it is for all uh, of the professional traders of the world. You got paid for what you made last year, and now you are charged to make more uh, or a lot more or be better this year. How are we going to do that? Let's look out here. First, let's look at this euro dollar. This last trading day of the year is a tricky one, right? Market is super short dollars. Um, and we do feel like this is going to spill a little bit in the first four or five days. But the first move should be, the first move tonight, well, actually, it might be lower to take out some stops. But we're certainly not going to trade this in New Zealand uh, or in Australia tonight or even Japan tonight. We're going to come in fresh at the European Open. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how far this pushes down. Will there be stops below 122 to figure? Yes. Where are the interesting stops? Below here. 121.20. <clears throat> Anyone who is trading in uh, December, uh, this was the FOMC. Um, this was FOMC, I think, 16th. Traded down to 22. I forget what happened here. Gosh, I should remember that. But anyway, 25 held. There were big, big bids uh, on the 121 handle, the 121.20. So any of the medium-term stops are going to bleed through 121.20. You want to keep an eye on that level. Cable, I don't really know what to do with this. We're square again. Um, I would wait to buy cheap ones. Uh, but even that, I'm not even sure. Like, the UK is a fucking mess, right? And what did Brexit accomplish? There's nothing on services, nothing on finance. And it's like 21,000 extra hours of administration and paperwork to trade goods with your like with your neighbor who used to be seamless. I mean, from a distance, what a four and a half year waste of time. These fucking idiots. It's nothing to do with sovereignty. I don't know what it has to do with. I mean, come on. You know, it's not like the rules and regulations of Britain are going to be that different than the rules and regulations of Europe idiots uh all of them uh don't know what to do with sterling here my guess is 
there will be some clever guys who have shorted these highs. I'm not comfortable doing that. So there might also so there might be stops um, above here at the open, right? 136.86, and that's probably a fade in Asia. Dollar yen also tricky. We're just sort of plunking here down at the lows. Um, you kind of have to wonder if inflation comes into rear its ugly head and dollar yen, the shorts in dollar yen. You can see CTAs uh, are short this. This is a nice downtrend from 109. Some pretty serious bounces, but nothing serious enough to kill a, a, a long-term trading book. So the long-term guys are probably still short. Um, there definitely will be risk and stops below 102.87. We're not super clear on this, so we'll just be watching a little bit. Um, we'll see. Euro yen, uh, tricky. We thought these highs were going to uh, extend. We got long at the figure at 127. Scratch that trade. Um, but there will be risk above 127.25. Uh, but more importantly, there'll be risk below here. Um, we think 70 is the bingo number, 125.70 on the downside. And so if you get stops in euro dollar um, and maybe you get a little bit of a correction in, in equities, depending on what happens in Georgia on Tuesday, a um, lot could happen there. EM, totally uncomfortable with dollars are here. Um, we're only looking at the right hand side. I know we always say look both ways, but going into the beginning of the year, we're only looking at the right hand side. We'll see if we make another print at 1450. Um, but my feeling is, is okay, the first day of the year, there's be inflows, they'll be buying. We'll see if that holds. But then you have this Georgia thing, uh, Tuesday, which will be Tuesday night going into Wednesday. I don't really see, I see both results as sort of, I mean, the Democrats taking control is massively negative stocks, um, and the Republicans taking control is also less negative, but will be a ball kick uh, Wednesday. So I do see uh, the risk of, of pretty good risk off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week, so we'll be looking perhaps at topside. Uh, dollars are. Dollar max, um, less clear on. This could equally go a whole hell of a lot lower or a hell of a lot higher. I really don't know. Um, just watching to see if we get any good setups. Obviously, the year's low, 1969. Uh, Here at 94, not much to do. Aussie looks way overcooked. Did we get a turn bar on Friday? Uh, this was selling on the fix, so it's not super meaningful as far as proper flow, but that does look like a turn bar. A lot's going to happen. A lot's going to depend on what happens on, on, on Tuesday. Um, gold, same thing. Democrats win, gold goes way higher. Republicans win, gold goes lower. This is a the theme, right? Um, there will be big vol uh, on Tuesday. Are we going to get a clear out in euro dollar left before and then the Democrats win? So we get a big clear out in euro dollar left before the elections in Georgia. Democrats take control uh, and euro dollar to the moon, gold to the moon, um, big dollar sell. This could easily, easily happen. Um, so we'll have to look. Obviously, the big risk event is going to be Tuesday. Monday, we're not going to be pushing many chips in because there's not super, uh, super great setups to start. Like I said, uh, for the first time in a long time, we're square Bitcoin. Um, we don't, we're not short bonds yet. We will try and probably sell maybe at the one standard deviation some bonds. But we're actually just waiting for the charts to sort of settle in and we want to get ready for the first big trade, uh, most likely Tuesday night. Um, or in here in Europe, it'll be Wednesday, early Wednesday morning. 
So listen, 15 minutes, I've said enough, uh, answered some of your questions, but not really. Um, I like your questions, but let's not kid ourselves. I don't really give a fuck about them. Um, this video is for me. This is my video journal. This is for me to be accountable. I'm glad I help a lot of people. That's fantastic. Um, but this is me getting my head right. My first look at the charts before the trading day. There'll obviously be many more looks. Uh, first trade or the markets are going to open in about two hours. Those of you on retail accounts will open in I don't know, six hours, whenever the hell retail opens. I don't even know. Um, but the institutional first prices will be out in two hours. Let's see how it goes. I'm very, very excited for New Year trading. Um, voila, there we go. I wish you guys the best of luck this year. Uh, be disciplined. Follow your process. And go ahead. Make some dough. I dare you.